Hey everyone, welcome to Short Sale Radio. I'm Marco Simmons, your host. Here we talk about all things foreclosure, like short sales and all types of distressed property situations. With me, of course, is my wife, Gloria Simmons, who is the short sale strategist. As a matter of fact, that's the website you can find her on to get more information. It's the short sale strategist. Dot com. Hi, Gloria, and welcome. Hello. How are you? Um, awesome. Short sales is not something a lot of people like to talk about. There seems to be always some negative connotations regarding short sales, but short sales really, when people start to understand them, can be beneficial, I guess, you know, depending upon what your situation is. Mm -hmm. But there are things about short sales that people really don't know. They don't really understand, and that's what we want to talk about today. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, you have a very, very good blog. I was reading it um, earlier before the broadcast, and one of the things that you talked about was the five stages of grief in a short sale, which I thought was very, very interesting. Explain that a little bit. Well, let me tell you a little bit about my background and um, to kind of bring you up to speed. Is um, I've been working on working with homeowners who have faced foreclosure for the last 18, almost 19 years. Okay. And one thing that I have noticed that is common among all of my uh, clients is that they are going through something that is similar to grief. Well, which is grief, which is something similar to how people grieve when they when they lose, hmm. um, when someone dies, when or when they when they have a significant loss. Okay. And what I have come to recognize is that when I'm sitting with them, I have to be aware of that. I have to understand where they are in that process, so that I can help them. Okay. And then I can also help them to recognize where they are and that they are actually grieving, and it's okay. But um, it's a very interesting correlation that I have come to find, and I decided to write about it because there's such a stigma attached to a foreclosure and losing your home. I could say that is so true because that's happened to me. That happened to me several years ago, losing a home to foreclosure. Um, and probably more than likely, these things that you're about to talk about, I've experienced, I'm quite sure. Mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about losing a home, what kind of levels, I guess, or stages are there that okay. a homeowner could actually be experiencing? Okay. So first, let me just kind of briefly go over the five stages of grief. When someone, say when someone dies or has a loss, okay. suffers a loss, a significant loss like that. Um, the first one is denial, which is this is not happening. This is not happening to me. And then it kind of, uh, I guess they go to the sunken place. We, we all are familiar with that term, which is anger. Like, why mm. is this happening? Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, then there might be something that um, is called bargaining, which is, you know, things that I'll promise to be better or, you know, I'll try to do something different. You know, they're trying to bargain their way out of that situation. Then comes depression when they feel stuck, which is I just don't care about this anymore. Hmm. And then hmm. um, then after that, it kind of descends into, OK, I accept my situation um, and I'm ready for whatever comes next. So you're saying that in a short sale, people can experience these stages. You said first there was denial. Mm -hmm. okay, it's not happening to me. I recall that. Okay, mm -hmm. Then there's the anger. People get upset. Why does it seems like this is happening just to me? You know, we kind of get in our own little world thinking that's the case. Bargaining, hmm. You might have to go a little detail or, or into a little more depth with that particular one okay. to kind of explain that one. I can see where it can where it can come about or be a part. Then depression, I get that, and then finally acceptance, as you say. Mm -hmm. So in these five stages. How does someone recognize these kinds of things? I mean, you want to go from point A to point B. You, you start here at a certain point, but you're trying to get back to some semblance of normalcy in your life. Mm -hmm. What happens? I mean, how, do, how does that take place? How can we get from point A to point B? 
Well, again, it, it really boils down to recognizing where they are in the process and bringing that to their attention. Okay. Um, for example, if we talk about the first stage, which is denial. Um, when I sit with, well, before I even get to sit with a lot of homeowners, um, they won't call. They have barricaded themselves in the house. Um, they're not answering the phone. They're not opening the mail. Um, and during this process, the process of uh, foreclosure is still ongoing. And it gets to the point to where the lender has sent them out uh, certain letters. And then it gets to the point to, depending on which state you're in, um, a foreclosure attorney has sent them out uh, some very, mm. you know, threatening letters, notice of default. And they're not opening the mail. They are in denial. Um, they're not seeking help. Um, when I call them, they're not picking up the phone or they're not returning the phone calls. They have basically stuck their hands in, stuck, stuck their head in the sand. Mm. And um, they just, they don't think that this is happening. They just refuse to believe that their beautiful home, their huge investment, their dream home, they're about to lose it. And that's called denial. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. What about anger, though? Why would someone be angry at this particular point? Or what you said that that was the next step? Well, anger comes because of fear. If um, mm. yeah, our pastor has taught us that if you find out what someone is afraid of, then you can find out why they're angry. It's it's the root of the anger, the fear, and so this is this is a very difficult stage because. Um, a lot of homeowners are angry throughout the entire process and it kind of makes it difficult for you to get in there and help them because they're going to take that out on you. They're going to take that out on the buyers who come by to look at the house because the house is up for sale. They're going to take it out on the house. Hmm. And so I, over the last 19 years, um, I have seen and heard where a lot of homeowners who have gone through foreclosure just would leave the house trashed. They would take the appliances out of the house, punch holes in the wall. Wow. And this is this is the anger that a lot of homeowners experience because they feel helpless and they feel like I'm going to take it out on something or someone. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that anger comes in. That kind of makes sense. You've got the stage one denial, then the stage two anger. But now we're getting into stage three. You said stage three is bargaining. Explain that a little bit. Well, we had this happen to us. Um, this is where the homeowner is going through the process with us of going through what, what we call a short sale, which is where we work with their lender and the lender is working. We're working to negotiate for the lender to take less than what they actually owe on the home so that they can walk away without uh, the penalty of a foreclosure or the devastation of a foreclosure. And we can get kind of more um, into that at another time. Okay. But but the bargaining comes in is when on the uh, on one hand we're going through a short sale process with them and then they are still in the process of trying to negotiate a loan modification and bargaining with their bank in some capacity now when you're talking about a short sale when, when you're in a short sale process there's really no room for loan modifications though isn't that correct what by the time we get to a short sale usually the lender has gone through um, different phases of loss mitigation with them and loss, um, a loan modification is one of those stages. Um, once the lender has determined um, through a loan modification, which is basically they're modifying the terms of the loan and they're taking, uh, you know, if you're behind on your loan, they're going to take what is owed, what is past due, and they're going to include that into a new mortgage loan for you. It's called a loan modification. They're modifying your loan. Um, the problem with a loan modification is that they require that you actually have some form of income, stable, consistent, verifiable income. Mm -hmm. So if um, it gets to the point to where a client is engaging me, it's because they don't their situation is not recoverable per the bank. They're, they have no other options um, other than walking away. However, we um, 
we're not attorneys and we're not giving legal advice is we engage them to do a short sale so that we can negotiate with the bank to take less than what's owed so that they can walk away uh, potentially with uh, relocation assistance depending on the lender and not have to look back and wonder if that house went into foreclosure and if that bank is going to be chasing them around for an amount that may be still outstanding on that loan. So foreclosure always will be better or rather a short sale will always be better than foreclosure because what you're saying is that gives the homeowner an opportunity to walk away without this adversely affecting them? Yes. Um, foreclosure is devastating. It devastates your credit. It devastates your self-esteem. And also, depending on the lender, depending on um, a few things, we don't, want it, we don't want there to be a situation to where the lender will sell the home. And this may not be that market. However, it's still better to snap everything down with a short sale um, to make sure that you're not in a situation where someone is going to come back and say, well, we weren't able to sell this home and therefore we need we are going to place a judgment against you to get the amount that's still outstanding for this home. Hmm. OK, it yeah. makes perfect sense. What about stage four? Stage four is depression. And um, that's that's a very heavy stage, too, is because you're a loss is a loss, whether it's a house, a loved one, a job, um, a loss is a loss. And depression sets in basically once that person realizes that, OK, this is happening mm -hmm. um, and I can't do anything about it. It's they're overwhelmed. Um, they don't care anymore. And that, that situation is something that I have to really work hard to kind of, you know, to stay on top of them, to stay engaged, because as we're going through the process of working with their lender, uh, there's a lot of uh, interaction back and forth. And we need paperwork from them. We need their cooperation. Mm -hmm. And we don't want them to sink into a deep depression where they don't care anymore and they don't engage. They self-sabotage. And they don't uh, fulfill their end of what is needed to uh, to close on a short sale. I see. So depression is very, very real. Of course, that's a little different than the anger stage, of, of course. And then, of course, you got stage five. Mm -hmm. Stage five is that they have accepted their situation mm -hmm. and they realize, OK, this is happening. I'm not a bad person. The, this does not make me a failure. I am going to empower myself and I'm going to pull myself up by the bootstraps, get this done and move on with my life. Yeah. Acceptance. Yeah. That, of course, that's when they see that there is some kind of light at the end of the tunnel and that will allow them to put themselves in a position to where they can finally move forward and move on with their lives and make mm -hmm. some things happen going forward. Mm hmm. Wow, five stages of grief in the short sale. Never really thought about it that way. That's some good information to know. Mm -hmm. it, it is something that I, I know that when I first did my first short sale in 2004, I realized that every homeowner that I met with was, was at some stage. And once I recognized that, then my conversations with them uh, was, was different. Mm -hmm. um, some were, you know, eager to get it over with. I just want to just push past this and I want to just move on with my life. And some I had to really, you know, be a lot of I had to massage the situation, pray with them, um, come sit with them um, and just really, you know, engage them a lot more um, because they needed that type of support. Um, truly, short sales is a ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds exactly like it that. is. Yeah. It is a ministry opportunity. It is a ministry. And um, we uh, once I recognize this and I realize that um, these things were going on and it, it was very similar to any other type of grieving situation. I was able to really support my clients better. Be that as it may, um, with the information that you shared today, what about some tips that uh, you could share with someone who's listening right now who might be going through uh, the possible foreclosure? They may be at one of these stages of grief where a short sale is concerned. Maybe they haven't reached out, though, and started the process, but 
they can kind of see it on the horizon. What are some of the tips you can share that can help people overcome the, the grief of a short sale? Well, I would say first, just allow yourself to grieve. Um, because mm. sometimes if you just hold, if you hold those emotions in, then it's, it's going to me, in my opinion, it's going to be worse because you're, that's where you're going to have some sort of outburst or you're going to, you may cause yourself some physical or even more emotional harm. Mm. Um, the second thing that I um, advise is to seek support, reach out. Um, you don't have to, to have to be in shame and go through this by yourself. You're not a bad person. This is happening. You're not the only one. Mm -hmm. So you need to reach out and let someone know what you're going through and find the uh, resources to get yourself out of this situation. Okay. Um, the second one is make um, the third thing is make sure you take care of yourself. Um, you know, you have to eat, you have to exercise and get enough rest while you're going through this because the mm. physical aspects um, will start to then start to combine with the emotional aspects and you can cause yourself some sort of health crisis because of the overwhelming emotions and um, the emotional things that can really have a great impact on you, which is what we don't want. I see. Yeah. Okay. Focus on the positive, which is um, that the, a short sale, for example, can help you avoid a foreclosure and get out of debt. Focus on the light at the end of the tunnel, which is there is life after the short sale. You can get into another home there. You can move on. This is not the only uh, house that you will be able to get. And we help homeowners with that all the time. And last but not least is seek professional help. Um, if you're struggling to cope, then um, there's nothing wrong with get, getting a therapist or a counselor to provide you with that additional support and guidance because this is a, a, a difficult time and it's not there's nothing wrong with getting either ministerial support a therapist or a counselor engage them to help you to get through the emotions because there's all types of reasons why people are in a short sale it mm -hmm. could be a divorce it could be a loss of a spouse loss of a job and so those underlying reasons are secondary reasons and probably i would say primary reasons why a homeowner is facing foreclosure and why of course they should reach out and seek professional help you know i always say that bad things happen to good people um absolutely one of the things because actually both of us have experienced that yes and i guess the important thing is even though we're on this side of it now, we understand those things. We understand those stages because we've been there. They're not easy. They're not fun, of course. However, there's always, as you said, there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. And ladies and gentlemen, listen, it's important that you seek some resources yourselves to figure out or to get that kind of emotional support that it is that you need. Um, you have some material that you'd like to share. Yes, and I call it a foreclosure survival kit. So along with those five stages of grief, what I recognize is that while we're going through the foreclosure process, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, um, depending on um, everyone's situation, that there are some things that can help you while you are facing foreclosure so I pinned an ebook which is called how to survive while going through the foreclosure process and in that book you're going to find um, expert guidance on what are your options um, to either save or sell your home what are some food resources utility assistance resources relocation assistant resources that are available for mm -hmm. someone in my situation because those are the basically the the things that are hot button issues um, while someone is sitting in that situation. I see. And so I wrote it down because these are things that I help my clients with. But I figured I would um, uh, I would uh, be better uh, at serving the market by putting this in an ebook so that I can help as many people as possible. I don't think too many of us consider everything that goes into a situation like this when you hear the word short sale people kind of freak out they go oh, you know it sounds like something really really bad or, or what have you but you've kind of 
shed some light on the fact that short sales, realistically, if somebody's underwater on their home, a short sale is a way that they can maintain some dignity. They can get from under that burden, get from under that load, and they can find themselves on a pathway at some point a little later on to new ownership, you Mm -hmm. know, after getting rid of this particular property. Um, You know, we... We're so busy, I guess, trying to keep up with the Joneses and keep up with appearances and those kinds of things. And we often hold on to things that are killing us. You know, we mm-hmm. we we get cars that cost too much. We can't afford the car note because we're trying to impress somebody and all this other kind of stuff. We got this big old house that we can't afford or what have you. It's not always because we do it because of bad choices. You made mention earlier that sometimes things happen. This is the life. This is our life. You know. People lose a job. People lose a loved one. Anything can happen. And as I said, bad things can happen to good people. So, listen, how can those individuals get a copy of this free ebook? I would um, say to go to our website, which is the short sales strategist.com, and go to our resources tab, uh, click the button, and uh, enjoy the ebook i want to reach out to as many people as possible and last thing i want one thing i want to point out is that we may or may not be in a market that uh where everyone is necessarily having to go through a short sale Mm -hmm. but there are definitely people every single month going into foreclosure foreclosure, whether you have equity or you don't have equity a foreclosure is a foreclosure and we assist with all types of distressed property situations all right the short sale strategist.com that is the website marco simmons along with gloria simmons here on short sale radio we talk about all things foreclosure including short sales um man you've given us a lot of information a lot of good things to think about today i um i i want to be a blessing to our communities Uh, this is the side of real estate that is not talked about enough. yeah not talked about a lot and because it's not um talked about a lot then a lot of people don't reach out they go into foreclosure in the cover of darkness they move out of their homes in the cover of darkness without a game plan on where they're going to go Mm. and so our, our job is to bring it to the forefront Let's talk about it. And that's what we intend to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Short Sale Radio here with Gloria Simmons, our guest today. We've got more coming up for you a little bit later on. But don't forget, go to the website, the shortsalestrategist.com. Go to the resources tab and get the free ebook, which will uh, help you find resources you need while you may be facing foreclosure. Listen, there is light at the, t- at the end of the tunnel, um, but... You know, if you don't know, you don't know. Gloria, thank you so much for sharing all that good information today. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. You've been listening to Short Sale Radio. We talk about all things foreclosure, like short sales, distressed property situations, and the like right here.